Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at the messages service that's built into Yosemite Server. Now, as we've been doing in the screencast uh, series, we've been walking through all the various services that are available uh, with Yosemite Server. And one of those services is this messages service. Now, uh, what the messages service does is it basically uh, replaces or could be used as the iMessage service uh, that you have in iCloud. And so it allows you to host your own iMessages service without having to have it hosted in the cloud anywhere. So for those of you that want a private service, maybe you want a private messaging service for uh, various reasons. Maybe it's just for your household uh, to give your kids a try at it, all the way to a uh, business or enterprise where you want to have all of those messages and things kept private. Uh, you can do that with uh, Yosemite Server uh, with this service that's built right in. And so it really can be a great uh, option for you to use uh, to have a private cloud uh, service for your messages. So what I'm going to do is walk through the uh, setup process, and then we're going to take a look at how you actually set the service up uh, with your various clients. Now, this is the service right here, and it's a pretty uh, simple setup. As we've said in every other screencast, you can see there's a status area here under access and then a permissions issue. As always, you can edit uh, who has access uh, to the service. You can allow connections from uh, only some users or all users, and you can obviously, uh, when connecting, you can connect from all networks, private networks, or only some networks. And so you can limit uh, the range of who and who can connect to the service and from what network uh, if you've got multiple networks. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to leave that alone because uh, we're kind of looking at a home server here. Now, once we've gotten the access stuff uh, taken a look at, now we go to the settings area. And there's really only two uh, main settings here to set up. Uh, the first is to enable server-to-server -server federation. Now, what this means is this sets up basically a secure connection between uh, two servers that are communicating with the messages service. It's kind of like an SSL type encryption uh, that kind of goes back and forth. It allows you to set up uh, that type of communication so that it's a little bit more uh, secure. And you can customize it a little bit as well. Now, if you are planning on using this server-to-server -server federation, uh, it's important that you make sure that the service... Uh, the messages service is covered by your SSL certificate. And so if you just remember, come up here to certificates, if you remember in a previous screencast, we talked about them a little bit. Uh, you want to come in and check your certificate just to make sure that you've got your certificate uh, for all of your services. And so if you see this, you're in good shape. Uh, if you don't, and it says custom, you have to go and look and make sure that the messages service uh, will be uh, covered by your SSL certificate if you're going to use any kind of encryption. So why don't we just go ahead and check that because there are a few settings that you can set on here uh, to do this a little bit further to fine tune it. If I just click on edit, uh, again, you can require uh, server to server federation, uh, which we did. Uh, now, you can also allow federation with any domain, which means that any server can try to connect and you're fine with that. Uh, or you can actually restrict federation to only certain domains. And, and where this would come into play is if you only have certain uh, domain names or, or servers that you want to interact with. Maybe you do want to keep this completely private and you've got maybe a couple of servers in your company uh, that you only want this to be able to connect to. You can set that up this way. Uh, you just simply hit the restrict button here, put the plus, and then type in your server name, you know, server.example.com, for instance. And uh, there you we've got that one, and then it just basically will only restrict federation to this particular server. So it does give you the ability to, uh, you know, kind of fine-tune this a little bit. Uh, in my case, that's not a real server. I'm just going to get rid of that and put it back to where it was and say cancel. And so that's how you can set that up for uh, that type of encryption. Uh, the other thing you've got is you can also archive all messages if you want to. So if you wanted to save an archive of your messages in case you needed to access those later, uh, maybe you've got some uh, regulations that require you to do that, you can check this box here. If I just uh, click on this little arrow right here, it'll show me uh, where they store those message archives. And you can see it's right here in the server library messages area. And there's a message archives folder that is set up where all those messages will be archived over here as I use them. Let me just uh, click this down here for a minute. Uh, so in my case, I'm not going to archive them all. I'm just going to uncheck that and leave that alone. So now we pretty much have everything set up uh, the way we want it in order for us to use the messages service. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and throw the switch just to start the service. And again, it's going to ask me if I want uh, the ba uh, airport base station to automatically uh, open the ports uh, that are needed to run this. I'm going to say allow. 
so that the service can get started. And you can see it says the service is available right now and it's up and running. Now, one more thing I want to show you is I want to show you um, the ports that you need to open uh, for the messages server. So let me go ahead and pull up my airport utility and show that to you. Okay, here we are over on my airport utility and I'm on the network tab here and you can see I've got my port settings and here's messages. If I were just going to edit that, and this will show you the various ports that are used uh, by messages. Uh, as you can see, we've got all of these UDP ports. Uh, basically, it's 84 through. It looks all the way up to 403 uh, that it opens. And then here's the TCP ports. And then the same is true for the public as well as the private on the UDP. So you just would copy these the exact same way. Uh, so that gives you an idea for the ports that need to be open, just in case you're using a router that's not an Apple router. Uh, those are the ones that you're going to want to open. Let me just cancel that. And so that gives you an idea of how, uh, how that works and how that's set up. Now, one more thing I want to do before we set up a client is let me go back to the server here for a minute. And what I want to do is show you the concept of buddy lists because you can set up buddy lists for your groups and users inside our accounts area. Uh, if I just go to groups here for a minute, you can see I've set up a kids group uh, just for uh, kids on my local network. If I were just to double click on this to edit it, you can see I've got three kids here uh, all set up. And right here it says you can make group members uh, messages buddies. And so if I just check that box right there, that means that now these three people will be buddies with one another. And, uh, and that's how it will actually show up inside of, uh, inside of messages. So now that I've set that up, I'm just going to say OK. And so that now is uh, in effect. And we can go back to messages here. And we're all ready to go. So now what I want to do is show you how to set up messages on a client machine. So let me go ahead and go over to my client machine and show you how that works. OK, now before we do the setup, I wanted to show you uh, one instance of some issues that some users have had. And uh, I had it as well, so I thought I would show you how to fix it. For some users, when they get into the login uh, to try to set up their users, it won't take the login uh, for some reason. And it can be frustrating if it's not working. Well, part of that is a known issue where basically the host array here in the uh, Jabber host changes to just your local server's name, which was the old one that was originally there, as opposed to your fully qualified domain name. So we need to be able to change that. If you want to check to see if this is true for yourself, you would just put sudo server admin settings jabber, hit enter, log in, and it will show you all the different settings for your jabber server. So what we're going to do to try to fix this right here to be my fully qualified domain name, and I'm just going to paste some text in, we're going to do sudo server admin settings, and then basically what we're doing is we are saying uh, jabber host, so we're taking this line right here and we're reproducing it, but the difference is, is we're going to put in quotes our fully qualified domain name. End quote. And then we want to hit enter on that, and then that's going to do the reset. And you can see now it's reset my, my server line there to my fully qualified domain name. So that works out really nicely. Uh, the other thing, too, is if you wanted to while you're in here, you can uh, basically enable auto buddy uh, if you want to do that. And so let's go ahead and do that ourselves. So again, we're going to um, we're going to type in uh, sudo server admin settings, and then what we're going to do is just jabber uh, with the colon enable auto buddy, and then we're going to say equals, and we're going to say yes. Okay, so we're just going to change that to that. And so now auto buddy is yes. And so now if I just do a sudo server admin and we do a settings jabber and we run that, you can see now I've got the right index here. I've got auto buddy on yes and I should be set and ready to go. And so again, for some of you that, that are having some frustration with it, I wanted to show that fix before we go set up our remote client. So now let me go over to uh, the remote client and show you how to set this up. Okay, here I am over on my remote client, and so I've already got messages uh, started here. So let me show you how do we go ahead and set that up. If I go up to the menu here under Messages, and I just uh, click on Add Account, it'll give me this nice drop down. And so what I want to do is in Other Messages account and say Continue. 
And then in this dropdown, I want to make sure that I've selected Jabber because that's the type of server we're using. You can see it kind of changes the options a little bit. Uh, we're not going to worry about these server options down here. This is if you wanted to really customize it and uh, have control over it. In our case, auto should be fine. So instead, what we're going to do is put in our account name here, which is your short name followed by at your server is fully qualified domain name. So basically it would be, you know, your short name at server.example.com, for instance. Uh, you know, in our case, server.toddoltoff.com. That's how I would set that up. And then you want to go ahead and put your password in. Okay, once we have that set up, then we want to say create. And it's going to create the account for us and do the connection. And you can see it's starting to connect here. Let me just uh, stick this over here as it's making the connect. And it could take a couple of minutes to make the connect and make that work. Okay, here we are. Now it has logged in with my username and my information there. Now one of the issues that uh, server has is that there is an issue with the buddies list being automatically added. Uh, as you can see here, I've got no buddies populated in my list, even though we set that up that way on the server. Uh, doing some research, it looks like that's a known bug uh, that they are working on, uh, but I haven't had a solution yet. So uh, once, I, once I find a solution, I will post it on my blog so that uh, you would have that so you can get that fixed. Like I said, hopefully they'll do that soon. Uh, so there you go. That's how you set up uh, basically your own uh, messages server. And hopefully that, uh, like I said, hopefully that fix will come through so we can get the rest of it set up. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back to, at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.